He says, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be opened unto you. Wow, that sounds so amazing, so wonderful. But you know, for many of us, maybe for most of us, it just doesn't seem to be true. <laughs> I think we've all experienced that. I can tell you, I've experienced this in my life uh, more than once. I can remember a, a particular time I was struggling with something really very personal in my life and trying to overcome something. And I just kept asking the Lord because it was something good that I was asking for. It wasn't like I was asking for riches or, or power or, or importance. Uh, it was something really I wanted to change about myself. And I was begging the Lord. And it just, it just didn't seem like it was happening. So I think for some of us, those words of Jesus don't necessarily ring true. But we want them to be true, don't we? <laughs> All of us want those words to be true. That if we, just, if we just seek the Lord, if we just ask him, if we just knock on his door, uh, that he'll be there and we can encounter him. We want that to be true. What does that say? That says there's, there's something in us that longs for that connection with God, that, that, that thirst, we might call it, in us, that, that, that hunger for God, something beyond ourselves, the ability, really the capacity, that God has placed in us. It speaks to that, that this, this desire to seek and to find is something God has placed there. It's not something that's just a, a, a creation of our, our nature. It's a supernatural. Out of his love, God has planted that desire for him, which is our, our ability to know him and love him. And he's, he's, his, his calling to us, his reaching out to us. Um, that, that desire in us, that, that desire for us to want what Jesus said to be true is from God. And it, it speaks to our, our capacity for God, our ability to have a relationship with God. This idea that you know we do want that to be true, we do want to seek, and, and, and yet we don't find, it seems, uh, this, this is a very frustrating part of the human experience, isn't it? But we have to realize that our, if you want to call it a failure, or our, our inability to achieve that, that isn't on God. <laughs> That's on us. Because God has, has really created us for this. God has created us for relationship with him. God <laughs> desires that relationship with us more, infinitely more than we do on our end. And so if, if, if it isn't happening, if we're not making the connection, if you will, if we're not having that relationship, if we're not finding the God whom we seek, that, I hate to say it, that's kind of on us. And we have to look here. We have to look inside and, and, and what what are the obstacles that are in the way? Because those obstacles aren't on God's side of things. They're on my side. And I, and I know I've put up obstacles to that, my own selfishness, my own desire to, to, to yeah, I want God, but maybe I want God on my terms. Uh, I want God, but <laughs> I don't want to give this up, or I don't want to give that up, or I want it to be this way. You know, I, I've spent a lot of time, a lot of time in my life, quite honestly, sort of deciding for myself what this relationship should look like and how I want it to be and what's going to be comfortable and meaningful for me or is going to make me satisfied or happy. You know, and, and that's just kind of foolish, uh, you know, because it's so limiting. <laughs> it's so limiting for what God really wants for us. You know, I, I think one who really got this was St. Augustine. St. Augustine is, I think, is a fascinating uh, man a fascinating uh, historical figure in, in, our, in our faith, in our church. Because, you know, Augustine lived a pretty dissolute life in the world. Because he was looking for things in the world. He was searching. He was seeking. He was trying to find. Uh, he, was, he was trying to find meaning and purpose in life. And, gosh, he, he spent so many years looking for it in the wrong places. You know, we had that great country western song some years ago, right? Looking for love in all the wrong places. That was Augustine. But he finally, finally found really the fount of all his desire, 
the one who planted that desire in him. In fact, you know, his famous quote from, from his confessions is, you know, you have made us for yourself, O God, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. And then, then he's got this great um, section in his, his, his confessions. I, I would just like to, to, to share it with you because I just, this I think speaks to the experience of so many people. He says, late have I loved you. Beauty, so old and so new, late have I loved you. And see, you were within and I was in the external world and sought you there. And in my unlovely state, I plunged into those lovely created things which you made. You were with me and I was not with you. The lovely things kept me far from you, though if they did not have their existence in you, they had no existence at all. I love this part. You called and cried out loud and shattered my deafness. You were radiant and resplendent. You put to flight my blindness. You were fragrant and I drew in my breath and now I pant for you. I tasted you and I feel but hunger and thirst for you. You touched me and I am set on fire to attain the peace which is yours. Augustine, when he finally realized who was the source of that longing, who had put that longing in, once he just tasted a deeper relationship with God, as he says, he was just set on fire and his thung, hunger and thirst grew even more. I think the modern person, the person living in this world right now, uh, puts up a lot of resistance and obstacles to this search, and, and maybe not consciously. You know, I mean, I, 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 I don't know if there are many people who, you know, are genuinely seek, seekers, if we, if we call them that, who say, you know, I don't really want God. I don't really want to find him. I don't really want to find what God might have to offer. So I, I don't think there's like an active resistance, perhaps, but there is resistance because things get in the way. Our attitudes get in the way. Our attachments get in the way. Uh, we're, we're so, the, the, the modern world is so filled with distractions and things that are constantly pulling at us. Yes, in the time of Augustine, you know, it was a simpler time in the sense of, of, of media and, and, you know, constant visual and audio, you know, stimulation of the person. You know, now, my gosh, you know, we're the plugged in generation. There's so much uh, vying for our attention and so many desires planted in us for the things that, that this world has to offer. But all that stuff, even for Augustine, it just gets in the way of us looking beyond that to what is the real source of our longing. Because I think most of us, if we ever get to that point where we think, ah, I've got it. I, I've, I've grasped the golden ring, if you will. And then we realize just how elusive that really is and how it can be lost so easily. Or, or we think we have it and then, no, there's just still something more. What is it? What is it? And it's, and it's looking beyond. It's looking to connect with God on his terms, not on ours. Letting go. Surrendering, trusting, uh, that's, that's what gets to that deeper, deeper level. You know, when we try to put conditions on it, and you know, I'll, I'll have God on, on my terms, uh, you know, I, God lovingly, I think, looks at us and just kind of laughs at us as his little children who just don't quite get it yet. Uh, but we can get there. We can get there because God planted that, that ability to get there. You know, there's a, a famous poem by Francis Thompson that uh, uh, sadly I find more and more people aren't as familiar with. It's called The Hound of Heaven. And God is represented as the hound of heaven, the hound from heaven, who's searching for us, who's hunting us. And I think that, that speaks to us about the fact, well, if God is, is, has to hunt for us, you know, that kind of implies that we're, we're running away. 
We're trying to escape, perhaps, in some way, um, what a full relationship with God is really going to mean, what it's going to cost me. Um, we, we fear that. And that, that's, that's the tragic thing. We fear the cost, perhaps, of having that deeper relationship with God, of really committing our life to Him, of giving it, Him our all. We, we fear, I think, what is it going to cost me? You know, what is it going to take from me? Uh, we get this crazy idea in our head that I'm somehow not going to be as happy. When, when the opposite is the truth. No, I'll only know true happiness when I give up on all that other stuff. And so the hound of heaven comes for us. He comes for us. He's got a nose for us. He's constantly searching for us. And it's just the way uh, Francis Thompson puts it. He, he hunts us in the, in the byways. And wherever we go, he's, he's, he's on the hunt for us because he loves us. Uh, and, and he doesn't want us to run away from him. And we fear being captured by the hound, perhaps. But it is only in being captured that we find that, that everything we're looking for, the peace, the joy, the happiness uh, that, that we all long for, that we're seeking for, that we're knocking on the door for, we only find it when he finds us and when we let him find us.